Hi everybody and welcome back to Rocco Baby Crochet. I hope you've had a really good week. So I've got this week's free tutorial for you. It's another Christmas theme. I've designed some super cute Christmas baubles for your tree. So here's a couple of them. Here's one with two colours. I've done nude and gold and one in just plain gold. But I've done them in tons of colours already. And I've popped a little pocket on the back. So you can pop a treat in there. I'm using chocolate coins for mine. So they're going to be then on the tree. So when somebody comes, they can have a little bit of chocolate. But there's loads of good uses for these. So if you wanted to, it'd be really easy to turn them into some festive bunting in colours that's matching how you're dressing your home for Christmas. I just didn't want to do another bunting one with having done a couple recently, but it will be easy to do. Um, and also, I'm going to try and attach some of mine to my gift tags just to finish off people's presents. So again, especially if I know what colour someone's dressing the tree, I'll try and make them all individual for the person. So it's a really nice little touch. So there's loads of things you can do with them. So there is a link to the written pattern in the description to this video just below. And I just want to apologise for last week's. The upload was delayed by five days. There was a problem over on my blog and unfortunately I had to be wait I had to wait for it to be fixed by the people at WordPress and it just took a little bit longer than we thought it would. But it is up there now. I'm sorry if you was looking for it and couldn't find it, but we did get there in the end. So Another thing I've been thinking about is, so I'm super excited for Christmas, but I do realise that it's not the best time of year for everybody. So I was thinking about maybe there's some of you who, for one reason or another, aren't going to spend time with the family or the loved ones this Christmas. And I thought, how about if we did like a live feed at some point on Christmas Day, just so we could all get together and have a little bit of fun. Um, so let me know what you think in the comments, if you would like that or not. And also if you would like it, if you let me know whereabouts in the world you're from and then I can try and work out a time zone that will work for everybody if there's people interested in doing it. So don't forget about the Facebook page. It's growing really, really nicely, the community over there. And I love it so much, seeing everything that you make and sharing it. And it's so nice because it feels one-sided sometimes on YouTube. And when I'm over on Facebook, I feel like I can really get to know you all. So I really love it over there. And I'd love it if you could join us. If you don't want to miss out on the free pattern every week, then make sure you hit that subscribe and the bell notification. And that would be great if you joined us. Um, here on the YouTube channel as well. So let's get into what we need to make these super cute Christmas baubles or chocolate smugglers. I don't know what to call them. What do you think I should call them? everything that I've used to make my Christmas decorations. Now as I mentioned earlier you can use any double knit weighted yarn that you've got so this is great to use up your scrap ends of yarn from leftover projects but just in case you've seen the pictures I posted over on my blog or on the Facebook page I thought I'd run through the colours that I've used in case you wanted to make the same. So the double knit that I've chosen was Stylecraft Special Double Knit and this one here is Pale Rose and then I used the silver and the mushroom as well and these metallic looking ones are Rico Design Fashion Cotton Metallized Double Knit. Now this one under the lights I've got in here it's showing up a little bit more blue um, but in daylight it is a silver and then this one here is obviously gold and I also used a little bit of what was left over from the King Cole Glitz so that's just a white sparkly yarn as well double knit so in addition to your yarns um, you're going to need a four millimeter crochet hook a couple of stitch markers for this project especially 
again if you're new to crochet it's just going to help you keep track of your first and your last stitch of each round or row a pair of scissors some darning needles and this is optional but i just thought they looked really cute on there i've added some of these little jingle bells um onto my baubles so let's get into how we make one so to begin you're going to take your yarn and this is the mushroom colour that I'm using at the moment and we're going to make a magic ring. So you want to wrap the yarn around your fingers making the letter X, pull it back down and flip your fingers over and you'll have those two lines of yarn. If you've made the other Christmas projects with me you'll be used to making these by now. And you pop your hook underneath this first strand of yarn and grab onto the second pulling it underneath and then you twist your hook upwards, grab back onto the strand of yarn towards the back and pull it through and that's how you make your magic ring. So it's important that we crochet around both the magic ring and the loose end or when we pull this together it won't pull together so neatly. So your loose end should always be on the left, going towards the left and when you pull it you'll see that the ring becomes smaller. So you want to get it to a size that's comfortable for you to work around. And for round one what we're going to do is we're going to place 10 half treble crochets into this magic ring. So to do that we're going to chain one just to start off with to give us the correct height but that doesn't count as any stitch. And then you're just going to yarn over, insert your hook into that magic ring and underneath that loose end, yarn over pulling up a loop and you'll have three loops on your hook at this point. Yarn over again and pull through all three and that's your first half treble crochet. So we need to do ten of those. So there's one, yarn over, inserting my hook into the, into the ring and onto that loose end, yarn over pull up a loop. Three loops on my hook, yarn over and pull through all three. Pop your stitch marker into your first stitch at this point. If you have difficulty distinguishing them. And then we're just going to do that another eight times until we've got ten half trebles. So that's three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then when you pull on this loose end of yarn, what will happen is, let me just zoom in for you a little bit. When you pull in on this loose end of yarn it will just close the ring together and it will form a circle for us to work around. So you want to pull it together so it's quite tight so you've got no gap there in the middle. And then what we do to move up to round two we're going to slip stitch back into this first stitch where your stitch marker is. So pop your stitch marker out. I just carry that loose end up from my magic ring just to save me a job of weaving in later but if you want to weave it in later that's fine as well whichever's best for you. So insert your hook under the top of that first stitch, yarn over and pull through and pull through again just to slip stitch that round closed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to chain one and in every stitch around for round two we're going to place two half treble crochets in every stitch around. So we're going to start here directly under the chain. So we're going to yarn over, insert my hook into that stitch there and pop a half treble and then I'm going to yarn over and go back into that same stitch and pop a second one in there. Grab my stitch marker, mark that first stitch again so I don't lose it and then I'll just move on to my next stitch which is just here and I'll place two half treble crochets into there as well. So one 
and two. So you'll do that all the way around for a total stitch count of 20. So if you want to hit pause and come back to me when you're coming towards the end of round two and we'll move up to round three together. Okay, so I've just completed my 20 half treble crochets and I just wanted to show you before we moved up. So we can see where our first stitch is because you've popped your stitch marker in here. Directly under that is your chain one, which is, is a little bit more difficult to see now, but it is just there. So it's just here. And then this here is where we've slip stitched. So don't be tempted to put an extra stitch in there. So always count your stitches all the way around and as long as you've got 20 you've got the correct stitch count and there isn't meant to be a stitch put into this one here. So to move up to round three, pop your stitch marker out and we're just going to slip stitch to join this round. So pop your hook underneath the top of your very first half treble, yarn over, pull through and pull through again just to slip stitch that closed. And then for round three you go into chain one just to get it to the correct height and into this first stitch again directly under where this chain one has come out of just where this gap is here we're going to place a treble crochet increase so we're going to pop two half treble crochets in there. So that's one and two. Pop your stitch marker back in your first stitch when you come to the end of the row, round, even. And it's really easy this pattern because as long as you can do a half treble crochet and a double crochet, um, you, you'll be okay. Just remember as well that I use UK terminology, so a half treble crochet um, in the US abbreviation is a half double crochet. And when I'm saying a double crochet in US terminology, that's a single crochet. So we've done our increase in our first stitch. Into the second stitch along just here, we're just going to place one half treble crochet. Into the next stitch along, we're going to place half treble crochet increase. So we'll pop in two into that stitch one into the next and you're just going to alternate it all the way around so my next stitch will be an increase of two half trebles then one two one two one all the way around until I come to the end and at the end of round three you should have a stitch count of 30 so if you'd like to hit pause now and come back to me when you're coming towards the end of round three and we'll move up to round four together Okay, so I've just finished my 30 half trebles for round three. Again, I'm going to slip stitch it back to this first stitch to close the round. So insert my hook, yarn over, pull through and pull through and chain one. So round four is the last round for this half of the barbell. And it's another increasing round again. The reason why we do increasing rounds is so that this remains a flat circle. So if we wasn't doing increasing rounds, it'd start turning up on itself, and that's how uh, that's what we want to avoid. So for round four, the stitch um, repeat is going to be a half treble increase followed by one half treble in the next two stitches. So right underneath our chain one, so into this space here, I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook and place my first half treble. Yarn over, insert my hook back into that same stitch and place my second one. And then one half treble crochet in the next two stitches along. So that's one and two. Pop your stitch marker back in for when you come to the end. So we've done four stitches. Count them back if you need to. You're counting the V's. So that's one, two, three, and there's my fourth one. At the end of round four, you should have a stitch count of 40. 
So the round repeat is, I'll do it again with you. So a half treble crochet increase, one and two, followed by one half treble in the next two stitches. And you're just going to repeat that all the way around until you come to the end of round four. So if you like to hit pause until you get to that point and I'll meet you when I finish my round four. I've just finished my 40 half treble crochets all the way around for round four. Now this is the last round we're going to do for the moment on this front half of the project. So what you can do if you want to is you can slip stitch across to this first stitch here, chain one and fasten off how we normally would do but I'm just going to show you how I do an invisible join and it makes it a lot neater especially why these are for decorative items so the way I do that is I cut myself off five or six inches of yarn and then pull up on my hook pulling that all the way through Grab yourself a darning needle and just thread that loose end through and what we're going to do is we're just going to make a little bit of a, a fake stitch along the top here to knot it off and it's really difficult for people to see them then. And it, it makes it easier because for our final round we're going to be crocheting around this so we've got nice even stitches to work around. So it will give you finished, um, your finished bauble a nicer look. So once you've threaded your needle what you do is skip your first stitch and go underneath both the loops of the top of the second stitch from front to back with your darning needle and pull that through. And then if you turn your work over, so the wrong side is facing you, and what you want to do from up above is just go behind the loop that is closest towards you from where it was originally coming out of, where we pulled it up out of, and just underneath the back bar of that loop as well and pull it down. And that's how we just finish it off and you'll see that that will just make a nice little V on the top of our project you can just play around with it until you get it to the same size as all your other stitches smidgen too big so if you just pull on it until you get it to a size so it matches everyone else and when you turn it over then you've got no knots and they all look completely even on the other side so then I just pick up a back loop somewhere around here and I'll just do a little knot pull it through when you're finishing off the knot remember to place your thumb over the knot because if you don't it'll pull all your work out of shape and pull on that until you know that it's gone secure Give your work a little stretch, make sure nothing's being pulled out of shape and it's not. And then I'll just weave in this loose end just under these couple of stitches here. And I'm just going to go underneath the back loops only of them for five or six stitches. Pull it through. Then skip this last one that I went under and go under the second one. And go back under the same loops again, pull it through, make sure you're giving it a little stretch each time you do this so it's not pulling your work out of shape in any way and then skip this one again and go back underneath these ones and then you know that that loose end is nice and secure now. So I know that this one from the centre is because I carried that over when I was working in the beginning so I can trim that one out of the way and I can trim this one out of the way as well. 
and so that is the first half of the bauble done so let's move on to how we do the little pocket for the back okay so to make the pocket at the back what we're going to do is we're going to start again with a magic ring so we're going to make that X again around our fingers and bring it down flip our hands over pop my hook underneath this first strand grab onto the one from the back pull it underneath twist my hook upwards and grab back onto the strand of yarn at the back and just pull that through. So we only need to make a semicircle this time but again we're going to start by chaining one and then we're going to make sure that our loose end is to going towards the left and just pull on that loose end until it's a manageable size for you and into this magic ring we're just going to place five half treble crochets so exactly the same as we did before but we're just doing five instead of ten so yarn over insert your hook into that ring and underneath the loose end grab onto the yarn pulling up a loop three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three so that's one so we need to do four more so we've got five in total so that's one two three four and five so what we do now is because we're only making a semicircle that's the reason we've not put as many stitches into this one so when you pull on the loose end it won't close up into a circle it'll just go as far as a semicircle and that's exactly what we want so again I will carry my loose ends up and underneath my next row of stitches just so it's out of the way so to start row two what you want to do is you just want to chain one and turn and we're going to just place two half trebles in every stitch so this on the hook counts for nothing our chain one doesn't count for anything so we're going into this first stitch just here so we're going to yarn over insert our hook down into that first chain into that first stitch yarn over pull up a loop you'll have three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three of those loops and then you're going to put two of those into every stitch around and at the end of this second row you'll have a stitch count of 10 so one so that's three For good idea on this one to definitely use your stitch markers because they can hide a little bit more when we're doing the semicircles. So we've done four so far. So if you count back your V's, one, two, three, four. That's my first stitch. Move on to the next stitch and place a half treble increase in there. So we've got six now, move on to the next stitch and if you're having trouble looking at it from behind and seeing the stitches, if you look at it from above you can see the V's a little bit more clearly. So you want to go underneath the top two bars of that stitch and place another half treble increase and then my last one is just here can you see it hides a little bit more when we're doing the semicircle but if you just look like I said if you look at it from above you can see the V a little bit easier so just yarn over insert your hook under both those strands that make up the top of the stitch place your half treble and then place your second half treble and that's row two completed so for row three you're going to chain one and turn your work again so for row three what we want to do is in this first stitch here so if we look at it again we've got our yarn on the hook which counts for nothing 
and then underneath that here we've got our turning chain so this is our first stitch here and that's what we're going to crochet into so we're going to place a half treble increase into that one so yarn over insert your hook yarn over pull up a loop you'll have three loops yarn over and pull through all three and then back into that stitch just to place a second one and that's your increase done so again mark your first stitch while we're doing this semicircle because you want a nice neat so on the back because I'm not sewn in all my ends yet on this one but on the back you want to make sure you've got a nice neat edge so if you're not counting your stitches or you're going into the wrong stitch this isn't going to look as nice so it's, it is worth just marking them if you're a little bit unsure so I've done my increase so into my next stitch along here I'm just going to place one half treble next stitch along an increase so two half trebles into that stitch next stitch along I'm just going to place one half treble next stitch along is my increase one and two so the next one is just one half treble next one along is my increase one and two then my next one along is just my one half treble the next one along is my increase one and two and then my last stitch here um, I'm just going to work one half treble into that one pop your stitch marker out, yarn over, insert your hook where your stitch marker was, pulling up a loop, three loops, yarn over, pull through all three. So for round four you are just going to chain one and turn your work. We're going to begin this round by first of all doing a half treble increase into our first stitch. So one and two pop your stitch marker back into that first stitch that you've just made which is just there and into the next two stitches along you're just going to place one half treble one and two next stitch along is our increase so I'm going to place two into that one one and two and the next two stitches along I'm going to pop one half treble into both of those so that's one and two next one along is my increase so I'm going to place two into that one one and two and then one half treble in the next two stitches one and two next stitch is my increase so two into that next one one and two my next one along is one and the same in the next one I'm just going to place one into that one so my next stitch along is my half treble increase so two half trebles in that one one and two and then I've got two stitches left so one half treble into each of those now I don't take my stitch marker out at the moment I'll leave it in there pop my last half treble pull up a loop but before I yarn over and pull through 
I'm just going to switch to my gold. So obviously if you were doing the plain ones where you were where you wasn't doing a colour change, you'd just continue and finish that stitch off as usual. But I just wanted to show you how I do my colour change. So I drop the mushroom colour and I'm going to edge this one in gold. So pick up my gold yarn, lay it over my hook and finish off the half treble in the gold. And then I'll um, weave in that loose end as I go across. Okay, so where my stitch marker is, I'm just going to place one double crochet in there. So that is US, that would be a single crochet. I'm going to carry my yarn over to tie in this loose end and secure it. Pull on your, your first colour of yarn if it gets a little bit loose and that'll tighten that stitch up a little bit for you. But you just go into, let me just move that out of the way for a minute, insert your hook directly back into where your stitch marker is. Yarn over, pull up a loop. You'll have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through both of those loops. It's only a little bit tricky really when you're getting that first one secured on there. And then you can pop your stitch marker out and pop it back out of the way. And then what you want to do is along this, this straight edge, which makes up our semicircle, you want to space eight double crochets evenly. And you want to make sure that your last one is placed in this very first stitch here that we did of the previous round. So what I like to do is just roughly pop one where every row is. So I just insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through. And then I'll move on to my next row here. One, yarn over and pull through. One into this row. So that is three, one into the very center. Oops, I think I've pulled the magic ring a little bit too tight. <laughs> Can't get my hook in, there we go. One into the very center. So that is four, one into the next row across. Five, move across six, move across to the next row, seven and then one where we did our very first stitch so you just go in into here, just into there. And then what you want to do is you just slip stitch that to the very first stitch Here, so insert your hook underneath the top of that stitch, yarn over, pull through, pull through, chain one, and we can tie off that end. So snip your yarn, making sure that you leave yourself enough of an end to weave in. Pull on that so it's nice and secure, and then we can weave in. We can cut these ones out of the way because them ones have already been woven in. And if you get your darning needle, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit again. Grab your darning needle and thread your yarn. And again, just like you did previously, you're just going to go under the back loops of the stitches. And pull through and then work your way back and forth a couple of times just so you know that that end is nice and secure then.
Lovely. Give it a little stretch. And then you can get rid of all your little loose ends. And we're just going to join these two together now. So if you grab your front and your back, and what you want is you want both the wrong sides facing each other in the middle. So you've got your outsides together. And you're going to get your gold yarn or whichever yarn that you're going to trim yours off in. Make a slip knot. And what you're going to do is you can pick any stitch at all on the front half. It doesn't matter. I tend to make it just um, so I can see where my woven ends are. So they're on the inside so they're not up at the top and they're not visible. That's what I tend to do. So I've got them down at the where with up at the bottom. So your loose your woven in ends should be going to the left of you. And pop your hook in at some point there. And then your very first stitch in the mushroom colour. Pop your hook through that. And you're just going to slip stitch these two together to join them. So yarn over and pull through and pull through. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make sort of the star shape. So what you want to do is you're going to move into the next stitch and we're going to do a cluster of stitches into that next stitch. So I can see that my stitches are lined up nicely but sometimes it might be a little bit easier if you um, yarn over if you're struggling to see your stitches, insert your hook first of all underneath the next stitch along on the front and then you can do it then on the back piece. So you don't have to do it all in one movement if you're struggling to line your stitches up. And we're going to place a cluster of two half treble crochets in this stitch. So one and then insert my hook underneath both sides into the same space again. Yarn over three loops on my hook. Yarn over and pull through all three. And then you're going to chain two. And then we're going to place two more half treble crochets back into the same stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook back into that same stitch through both sides. And pull through and my last one and pull through so then what you want to do is we're going to skip two stitches so one one two and we're going to move into this third stitch which is here and we're going to place the exact same cluster again so yarn over, one, two, insert your hook into your third stitch along. I'm just going to make sure that they're lined up. One, two, three. That's, there's my third one there. Yarn over, pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all three. Yarn over, back into that same space. Yarn over, pull up a loop three loops, yarn over, pull through all three. Then we need to do our chain two, one, two, and then two more half treble crochets back into that same stitch. One. And two. Skip two stitches again and into the third place the same cluster again. And we're just gonna do that all the way around but we'll do it together because when we're coming towards the other side then we make our loop for the barbell
yarn over, insert my hook and then that's my fourth half treble for that one. So then I'm going to skip two stitches again and into my third stitch along place my next cluster which is two half trebles chain two and two more half trebles all into that same stitch Oops. I'm not doing very well with this one, am I? One. And two. Skip two stitches and place the same same sequence of stitches into the third. So two half trebles chain two two half trebles skip two stitches crochet into the third the same sequence again so you just want to take your time make sure that you're going under both the back and the front and then two more one and two And then you should have three stitches left on the back half of your work. So if we have a look here, so we've got one, two, three. So we know our stitch count is correct. So that will secure that nicely. So we'll yarn over, skip three stitches. Making sure you go through the correct stitch on that back piece of work. It can be a little bit tighter sometimes to work into so just make sure you take your time and two half trebles chain two and two half trebles So now all we've got to do is work along this top edge and it, we're just, we've only got the front of the piece of work now, that's all that's left. So again, we're just going to skip two stitches. So one, two, and into the third, place our sequence. So one, two half trebles, chain two, two half trebles, skip two stitches and place my cluster in that third one, one, two, chain two, then one and two more half trebles and then you go into skip two, one and two and then we're going to slip stitch into the third stitch along so skip two and slip stitch into this third one here. So just insert your hook directly under that loop. Yarn over and pull through and pull through. Then we're going to chain a total of 16. So you're yarning over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So that's three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. And then you're just going to slip stitch back into the same space that you've just previously slip stitched into. So that's what makes the loop for you to hang it on the tree. You can also make these into bunting as well, but I just thought we'd done quite a lot of bunting projects recently. So then we're gonna go back to our clusters. So you're gonna skip two stitches and into your third. Two half trebles, one. Let me just do that. Lost my tension there a little bit. So skip two into the third. You're going to place two half trebles. One and two. Chain two and two half trebles back into the same stitch. One and two. We'll skip two stitches, one, two, and place another sequence here, another cluster. So one, two half trebles, two chains, and two half trebles. So after you've placed your last cluster, you should have four stitches left. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip three and slip stitch into this fourth stitch here. So just insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop and then yarn over. And then we're going to slip stitch to the top of this very first half treble crochet that we did. Chain one. Leave yourself a good four or five inches. Pull up on that loop, pulling your yarn through. And when you pull on that loose end, it'll secure the knot. Just make sure you hold the knot between your thumb. And then we just need to tie in these loose ends. So just like we've done before, let me just grab my darning needle. And what I'll do is I'm just going to run them down on the inside of this back pocket just so you can't see them. Just making sure I catch, just, just making sure that I only go through the back loops so you can't see it on the other side. So there's one done and I'll just trim that one out of the way. And I'm just going to do exactly the same with this last one. Really fun little project. I'm, I'm enjoying making these. I've made eight so far now today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach them to some gift tags as well. So there's loads of different things you can do with them um, as well as putting them on your tree as chocolate coin hangers. There's, there's loads of little uses. So I've got some um, cardboard gift tags which are quite plain boring gift tags but I'm going to attach one of these with the gift tag as well. And there we have it. We just need to attach our bells, but aren't they super cute? Uh, so right, let me get my bells. Okay, so I've threaded my darning needle through this end. 
and then on the other end I'm just going to thread three bells and then I just go in the middle here right underneath where the loop for the tag is Just grab my hook and pull that side through and then just uh, make a little knot on the other side tying them loose ends as you would do with any other loose ends just make sure you like where they're sitting before you, you hide all your loose ends so I'm just going to do a double knot so don't forget to subscribe we've got a new pattern coming out every week and I had some problems with my blog last week on uploading but that has all been rectified now so this pattern is already over there and live on my blog if you want the written pattern as, as well as the elf hat so I know that, that there was a delay with that one going live um, but it is up there for you now and there's a link in the description to this video but don't forget to subscribe if you want to get a free crochet pattern every week and also if you do make anything and you're on Facebook we'd love it if you joined us over on our Facebook page um, it's a great little great little group and it feels a little less one-sided so it feels like I get to know you a little bit as well which is lovely and I really enjoy seeing all you makes even if it's not something that's come from this channel it's just really really nice to see what you've all been crocheting over the week so my last little end I was making this pattern yesterday in the uh, I was trying to film it but one of my cats decided she wanted to play with all the bells instead. I didn't want to spoil the fun because she was she looked like she was having loads of fun so I left her to it. Anyway, we've got there in the end. We've got it all filmed. So all that's left to do grab a chocolate coin, pop it in there. And that's ready to hang as a beautiful decoration on my tree this Christmas. So thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you again next week. Take care and happy hooking folks.